Hello, hello, I'm Kads, and it has definitely been a while since my last upload. For those who are aware, I did post it in my community tab, but I was stricken with the flu, and you could probably still hear it, the remnants of it, so I'm at like 85-ish percent. But because of the events going on today, this being a temporary event, I did want to make a video on it. But this should also be a short video. Hopefully I don't regret saying that. But this should be a relatively short video. So I feel okay to talk um, for at least a little bit here. I do want to have a longer form discussion about the champion pass. Although I have a feeling that my views are not going to be that much different from the general sentiment of the community. But nonetheless, I'd still like to talk about it independently. As far as the other stuff going on in the game... Summon pool is, you know, summon pool is the summon pool. Unfortunately, um, this one is not going to be free to play accessible because, or at least less free to play accessible because it involves um, partially the uh, fusion warm up coming going on. There is a fusion starting as well, which we'll try and cover uh, on Thursday. We'll see how I'm feeling. Um, but yeah, a majority of the points and the pulls, the free air quotes pulls are from the soul stone rush. And as you guys know, I focus more on the soul chases, so I don't have any soul stones to do this. And so I'm boxed out. So the summon pool is not going to be in the cards for me, but I can anticipate a lot of people or some people are spending a little bit of money to uh, try and go for that. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to make a dedicated video to that one. You guys know how they work. They're good if you want to spend money for it and gamble. And if you don't, then you don't participate and you move on to the next thing. Other thing I wanted to mention really quickly is they did have a cool opportunity in a bunch of tournaments to get some of the rares for the fusion. I didn't participate in any of those just because of the rares. I'm not really worried about getting them. I'm also not in a rush to get Lady Mikage. I have one mythical tome so far, so I don't really need to uh, rush to get her because she's not going to be booked. So I'm not worried about that. But that I I, I do want to you know call out call out uh, Plaria and at least say that hey, that's a good offering. That it's relatively easy as long as you participate in whatever tournaments. Granted, the milestones can be relatively high. These are my this is my milestone being in the end game, so it might vary depending on your player level and champion pool and whatnot but for me yeah i could do these i could have done most of them but i just didn't feel the need to it's a rare i'm not going to chase that down but it is good that they're offering it on the on the right hand side it's not that you have to win the tournament which would make it a lot more exclusive and of course the last thing here champion training uh tournament which i do plan to max out because i usually don't have an opportunity to get cosmetics and games and uh, in this case, it is a free offering for... Well, there is also a legendary tome, so let's keep it real. That's that's one of the main motivators. But uh, going a little bit further just to get a cool skin for Newt is worth it, in my opinion. So I was also chasing that myself. Um, I also think no one really mentioned or, or uh, I guess expected that there's also perfect solos up for grabs if you do win your group. So that is pretty neat. But of course, you're all here for the main event, which is, of course, the sacred pogo going on right now. Pogo or pull one, get one, as I do like to call it, just means that you'll get an extra legendary if you get a legendary at all and it cannot be a duplicate of the first one that you got now this is great for me because as we'll see in a bit i've been prepared for this situation and so we are more than ready to get into it but of course let's look at the overall shard count on the account 571 on the ancients 255 on the voids 15 on the primals and a whopping 52 on the sacreds. As usual, let's take a look at my mercy tracker here where you can see we are in mercy, six shards deep. And so it is relatively likely that in a small amount of sacreds we will get and proc the double legendary. So the odds are decent there in our favor. I mean, worst case, it could probably go up. I mean, technically it could go mathematically, it could go up to like 50 something. But realistically speaking, you shouldn't really pass 30. So I'm thinking a maximum of 10. Uh, worst case, hopefully I don't eat those words once again. Unfortunately, the nature of the beast is that for these, you do kind of have to go all in or else it's not worth it at all. And so we'll go as deep as we need to, to make sure we get the double pull. As far as who we're hoping to get, the wish list has not changed. And so let's go through it real quickly. It's going to be Valkyrie at the top, Poison Exploder. And after that, Battle Kazar, Molly Tankard, Lord Shamfort, and Harima. We're also looking for epics, at least anything from the Lady Mikage fusion. Ideally not a dupe of one we already have. But uh, yeah, I'll take any of those as well. All right, so let's get into the pulls. We've got some space, we've got some cash, and hopefully we get some decent luck. And the luck being to make it through this entire session without coughing up a lung. So let's get into it. Sacred number one. Is this going to be a tie for the fastest pogo event ever? No, it is not. We get to Adriel. I don't really think there's much to say on her. Like AoE decreased attack, a little bit of a heal. Not uh, not much, definitely in need of a buff. Sacred 
Number two, and again, this is an all or nothing thing. We don't really have a choice. Once we go in, we have to go all the way. Balthus Lord, kind of a absolute unit of an epic, but doesn't really see much play. I think he does have a single target provoke. Underwhelming. Uh, moving on, Sacred Numero Trace. So we got the lag, but we got baited. This is old Gruckus. I would say that old Gruckus is somewhat decent because he does have AoE decrease attack, which is great for faction wars if you're struggling and taking a lot of damage in Ogren. But other than that, there's not going to see much play. Number four, I think we're at number four is another Adriel. So once again, not much to say on her. Moving right along, next sacred. We are just churning straight through. More two macabs, little brother, soul drinker. He's a really cool bomb champion in fairness, at least with the passive, but he's just not strong enough with the multipliers as well as the uh duration of the bombs. It's a little too high as well. How deep does this rabbit hole go? Am I eating my words about this being quick? There we go. All right, legendary number one is a duplicate of Drexthar Blood Twin. That is unfortunate. But the second chance, and it's Harima. Oh, that is the best gift I could have ever received <laughs> under the circumstances. We finally got a champion from the wish list. And it is Harima. Oh, I okay. This means I can actually move up in arena, <laughs> or at least have an easier time in arena. Oh man, I'm 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 happier than I can feel or act right now for sure. Uh, a little bit muted, unfortunately, but uh, that's that is spectacular. Finally hit the wish list. It's been I want to say about a year because I got Lady Kimmy. I think. Uh, during Stoltis's summons, which is like basically a year ago in November, the guaranteed event. And uh, so for a year straight, I haven't really gotten a champion that's actually on high on my wish list. Well, I guess we know the strategy now, guys. I just got to get sick and then we can actually get champions that we want. So super happy. And, and in fairness, no shots fired at Drexler Bloodwind. He, he is a really good champion. It's just that he's free. And so it's never going to be exciting to pull him from any type of shard. But he is a staple of very, very, very many uh, teams. Um, that are more just like about HP burn, just being him being attacked. I, I use him in like normal Hydra just to kind of make that easier. So I don't really care about Poison Cloud because as soon as they attack, they, you know, Hydra heads have a lot of AoE attacks. And as soon as they attack afterward, they just put the burn on themselves and Poison Cloud is moot. Um, also the Provoke on the Decay head every once in a while. Stuff like that. But, you know, Doom Tower uh, floors, Doom Tower bosses, he's always good. Ice Golem. It's always good. Um, I mean, any dungeon really. Uh, Fire Knight, triple hitter on the A1. So he's an all-arounder for sure, especially in the, I, I want to say the mid game, especially. Um, he can definitely fall off towards the end game, but he can also just fit in any team if you need him to just be there and place HP burns on the passive. But of course, the woman of the hour is Harima, one of the best, probably the best defensive based nuker in the entire game. Decreased attack on the A1, a super hard hitting triple hitter on the A2 single target that starts to steal or stack up defense and reduce the defense of the target. And it also instantly instantly activates her a3 when it kills an enemy which it most certainly will in a lot of cases and on said a3 celestial awe uh, attacks all enemies really hard hitting ability and it can place a provoke for one turn which cannot be blocked or resisted if the target is from demon spawn so great for kandra funds more to macabs duchess you name it she can land it she is designed to counter demon spawn specifically but moreover with the passive she also reduces enemy ignore defense effects by 50 percent so savage cut in half barons aoe's cut in half you name it all the abilities all the effects are reduced by half so helm Spasher as well in addition her strength versus demon spawn means that they cannot inflict a crit hit on her at all doesn't necessarily mean that it's a weak hit but it'll just be a normal hit and then she cannot land weak hits on champions from demon spawn. So regardless of affinity, she can strong hit a duchess just like any other champion who's neutral or positive affinity. And to top it all off, a pretty hefty resist aura as well for arena battles. So overall, I am absolutely ecstatic. I think we're going to have to uh, build her out immediately. I don't think I have the books necessarily until next CVC. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to work her into a lot of my teams. She's definitely going to be in my live arena teams. And I guess I, I can mention that while we're here that I, I did recently um, make it finally go. Oh, my God, these offers. 
I did finally make it up to gold one in Live Arena, barely. So you can see we're, we're barely in and I've been bouncing in and out for the past couple of days. Um, but I have been enjoying the exclusivity of uh, the gold restriction, so to speak. So I haven't really done videos or content on Live Arena just because, I mean, I can in the future if you guys want to see that. But unfortunately, there's no secret to uh, late game or high high level arena because if you don't have any meta champions, yeah, I can't really help you do anything, right? Uh, myself included. And so Harima is definitely going to help with that. That helps me counter a lot of the annoying things, specifically Duchess, Andrew Fon, Mortu Macabs. So I have a new champion now who can also get banned every time like my Rotos. So in the interest of saving myself from the impending coughing fit, I'm going to end it here, guys. We did it. I think that was six or seven sacreds. I kind of lost count in the middle there. But uh, yeah, Pogo is done and we were able to get a the lovely elusive Harima. I guess we can't call her elusive anymore. She's finally here. But uh, yeah, number one most wanted arena champion in the game was her, and she is now mine. So eternally grateful. Got lucky on this one, and uh, we'll see what the uh, next ones hold in the future. As always, if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Really appreciate it if you did. And I will definitely try to get back to a regular cadence once I'm closer to 100%. So thanks for watching, and have a good one.